Okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the wrist move that I use to help really whip the golf club through the ball. Now, on this channel, I talk about options because I am very aware that a large difference in demographic will watch this channel and different levels of physical limitations and people will see and feel the golf swing different. And I think that's great. But in this video, obviously, it's gonna lend a little bit more towards the methodology that I will do with a lot of my students. And the reason why is, well, it's gonna be twofold. One, most golfers that I meet really struggle with width in the golf swing with the hands and arms and they really struggle with the sequencing of their arms and the start to the downswing. So a lot of students that I meet end up getting the club shaft too vertical here, and this arm has a tendency to pop out, which then means that you get stuck and a little bit flicky. And also I meet a lot of golfers that reach out for help and they really struggle with hip depth, which basically means they tend to sort of stand up in the backswing. So I always, particularly with online students, I'm always trying to devise what are the best drills that are going to eradicate as many problems as possible with just sort of one or two swing thoughts. Now, this is why what I do is I have thought about it and what seems to work best is, is really focusing on the takeaway and what you're gonna do is you're gonna concentrate first and foremost on the wall drill. So the wall goes behind you and the idea is, and I'll show you this from the side on in a moment, you're trying to get the handle of the club as close to the wall as you can, okay? So if I sort of set up this way down the range, I'm gonna get the handle as close to the wall as I possibly can, but make sure the club head doesn't hit the wall. Now with most golfers, you see what they have a tendency to do, the ones that lose posture, is they move this way. The head moves off and the club plows into the wall and the arms end up like this. You wanna get the feeling that your handle is moving to the side of your body, you're keeping the head nice and still, like so, so we're just moving the club like this. Okay, now the reason why it's so significant is golfers that I get that work on that, they, they eliminate the hip depth issue in the backswing immediately. Uh, keeping the head still, moving the handle to the side basically means you can't not get your hip back and it produces that brilliant hip depth issue under the same umbrella of just getting the handle to the side. Now, I like to continue that up, okay? I like to kind of go, right, once you're here, just sort of lift, keep your upper arm sort of relatively connected to the side of your body, so not like up the wall this way, and then just kind of lift the club up like so, okay? Um, but I'm not a massive lover of the club shaft being too vertical at the top, okay? And this is where the wrist move comes in. So what we have to do in the golf swing is we have to, in particular, obviously more importantly in the downswing, we have to get the club shaft on plane. Now this basically means if I was to draw a line through the butt end of the golf club here, it would point down towards my target line. And the way in which I do that is a lot to do with the hinge action on the back of this wrist. So if I take that hinge action away, then you can see the club shaft will end up this way. If I reintroduce it, it gets the club on plane. So what I like to do is I like students to get the feeling that the hands are working in, then you're gonna work more up, but as you're getting towards the top of this backswing, you wanna feel like you are then allowing that wrist to hinge. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna flatten the wrist and get the club on plane. But it's also gonna lend itself very nicely to this whipping sensation, okay? And that's basically the sort of feeling of when the club, you're sort of drawing the club back like so, and then you allow that club to just sort of hinge, and it's almost like you're gonna feel the weight of the club drop behind you as you can then bring your arm down. So, put it into perspective. What the wall drill has done, it has eliminated any hip depth issue, and what it's also doing is it's helping you maintain width. So, I'm trying to move that handle to the side of my body so I feel like my arms are being pushed away from my body like so. Now, introducing the hinge more at the top of the backswing is, helping me get the club on plane, but it's also, in my feeling, getting me very close to what I would feel if I was gonna throw a ball. It would be like, draw it back, and then there's a little sort of change in direction which we need to talk about. So, because I don't wanna get lost here in terms of what needs to happen in the golf swing, and this is why that sort of feeling of the club weight moving behind you is significant. What happens with this arm, okay, in the, in the backswing and, and coming in towards the downswing in particular, is in the backswing, what's really happening, um, and a good way to do this is put your lead hand underneath your right armpit or your trail armpit, and just sort of uh, demonstrate your rotation first, and you'll find your arm will move away from you, and then just let your arm fold, and then introduce a bit of hinge, and you might just lift the arm up a little bit depending on your preference, but that's it. Okay, so effectively, my arm doesn't really do that much movement. You know, obviously it sort of rotates this way, it elevates up a little bit and it hinges, but it's not, the upper arm doesn't move that far away 
um, from the original position, the way that the arm ends up so elevated is a lot to do with the rotation, right? Like so. Now, as we come into the downswing, a couple of things that you need to understand. Immediately, the relationship between the upper and the lower arm is going to widen, okay? So that has to happen. But also, we need the upper arm to move to the side of the body as that's happening. So it's really a case of both of those motions, should we just say, happening relatively simultaneously. And by allowing that to happen, it helps the golf club shallow. So you can see, if I allow the upper arm to move away from the lower arm, it does that. And then if I equally allow my upper arm to move to the side of my body whilst I do that, it helps my hands progressively move downward. Okay, so it's important to feel the weight of the club behind the hands as you start the downswing, and that's a byproduct of the correct right arm function. But if you, because you don't want to overthink that, obviously in these videos I'm always trying to explain it so you, hopefully you can understand it, but then what you want to do is you just want to sort of do something that's going to give you a nice simple feel. And the easiest way to do this is do some trail hand only swings. So as I sort of take the club back, I'm sort of taking it back, taking it back, taking it back. And then as I get to the top here, it's like I hinge it. And then as soon as I feel that hinge, I allow my upper arm to move to the side. Okay, it'll do that slowly like so. So it's very subtle, but what it's doing is it's helping me get like a feeling of sort of looping the club and then whipping it through. And this is feedback that I receive from a lot of my sort of students. The ones in which kind of go down this route of the handle moving to the side, it's almost like the club goes up and then it gets looped back down. But the looping action is a lot to do with the sequencing of understanding the fundamentals in which I've spoken about, which is good width here, good width here, but just getting that wrist hinge happening a little later just seems to get the feeling of the club head and the weight of the club head traveling more, should we say, behind you, which is gonna help shallow that golf club out. So just make some, you know, from this video, you should really take out, depending what you need to take from it. You know, if you're somebody who struggles with staying in posture, then you probably want to experiment this because it will eradicate a number of problems. And then also just make some swings, you know, where you just feel like you're introducing that wrist hinge a little bit later and then, you know, starting that downswing sequence. See what I'm doing? It's up and then I move because that's the secret with golf. You know, if you can get that sort of tempo and sequence happening in a very natural way, you don't have to overthink things. So hopefully this video really helps you out. You can, guys can let me know your sort of feedback. I'll see you soon.